we're heading to Cape Wrath Lighthouse. Such a good feeling. It is a challenge after all. It's not going to be easy. This is why it is called Britain's. What is it called? But absolutely everywhere. So good. What's up guys? It's Eddie Fitz. It's day 16 of the Cape Wrath Trail. We're just cooking some breakfast before setting off. Um, today we're heading to San Jose. We think it's around between 12 and 14 miles so we're going to push on to get to there um, and then we've only got one more day left until we get to Cape Wrath. Hopefully we make it to San Jose Bay, hopefully we get a sunset, hopefully this wind is still around because it's keeping the midges away um, but that's all a lot of hope so we'll just see how we get on. We made it past Reconic, we've got a bit of a road stretch. In the guidebook it says there's a London stores that sells lots of different things. We're hoping it sells a bottle of juice and a pack of crisps and fingers crossed that they're open on Sundays. So it's just up here that we're walking and then we're heading up um, to Kinloch Bellevue and then on our way to Sandwood Bay. So pushing on this road stretch, it's going to be a tough slog on the road but that thought of getting to Sandwood Bay is going to keep us going. We've been trying to sort our travel back home, how we're going to get off Cape Wrath. It's been lots of different phone calls, trying to phone the ferry, try to phone the lighthouse, try to phone and see if we can get any bus. So we're still in the process of just trying to get all that sorted, so hopefully we get that sorted soon as well. That doesn't happen often. We were walking along the road, hoping to get to the London stores. Just before we came to the London stores, we saw this open sign. We thought it was for just accommodation, but it was actually for a cafe. Um, so we stopped in, we got a full Scottish breakfast four cans of coke between us. Oh, now we're absolute stuffed but ready, fueled to get to Sandwood Bay. These little things, the small things in your day, like getting a full Scottish breakfast, is just one of those things that just helps power you on. Especially when it's unexpected and you, you, you look up from the ground and you're like, there's a full Scottish breakfast ahead. Doesn't it get much better than that? So we're now in the final push to Sandwood Bay and then hopefully we get there, good time, good weather. So we're now in a stretch to Sandwood Bay and as we're walking to Sandwood Bay we've just caught a glimpse of the lighthouse at Cape Raff. It's a way in the distance, you can see right here, little tiny white dot. Such a good feeling being able to see our end point so close um, and knowing that tomorrow that's us we'll walk into that lighthouse to that end point to just stand there and feel the celebrations coming in so still got a good stretch to get to Sandwood Bay but as you can see the skies are completely blue and it's amazing weather so we're just going to take it all in and have a good wee night We ended up making it to Sandwood Bay pretty early, um, probably around four-ish, but we then went for a little nap, crashed out, got some rest, and now we're down in the beach just waiting for the sunset. It's honestly such an incredible night. There's enough wind that it's keeping the midges away. You really couldn't ask for much more. To be camped here at Sandwood Bay, in this absolute pristine beach. Um, really never seen anything like it. You know, Scotland has some incredible beaches and this one is definitely my favorite. So it's so good to be here in the absolute perfect conditions for sunset. Um, as you can see, just look at how amazing it is. That is just beautiful. 
so we're going to try and capture some photos see how it goes um, but just taking it all in we're camped away up here you can see the tent just in the background there really couldn't ask for a better second last night um, just to sit here on the beach take all in the journey just remember what you've done what you're about to achieve getting to that lighthouse you know walking for that many days straight it's just been something that I never really imagined to be as tough as it was I know that we're still not finished and we've got a completely trackless ground to go but that eight miles is going to be a push knowing fine well that you're getting to the finish um, it'll be such an amazing feeling just getting to the Cape Wrath Lighthouse so there's nothing better than just being on the beach taking it all in just remembering what you've achieved you know starting in Fort William way back at the start when you're thinking to yourself what am I doing why am I doing this you know you're ready you're buzzing you're ready to go for it and then on obviously day four having that wash out thinking to yourself that's it it's over not going to be able to achieve it and now we're standing here in Sandwood Bay where I dreamed and thought of for so long waiting to wake up tomorrow for that last final day to get to Cape Wrath Lighthouse it's going to be such a good feeling it's going to be amazing absolutely amazing So it was a mission accomplished for Sandwood Bay. It was honestly so, so good just to finally stop, capture that sunset. You know, it's been so many days we've been waiting for a sunset like this where there was no midges and we could get out of the tent. So the fact that we got it in Sandwood Bay is honestly remarkable. It's just so good to be able to sit here, take it in and knowing fine well that tomorrow we're heading up to there all the way to that lighthouse and then a little bit more so we can get the ferry back down we've got all our travel and stuff sorted for Tuesday so we're going to get to Cape Wrath Lighthouse we're going to then stop off there hopefully get some food in a cafe we, we phoned them up and they say that they're 24 hours so that's pretty impressive that there's a cafe that's 24 hours and so hopefully we can get some food when we stop it's only 8 miles but it's going to be a hard 8 miles because it's just trackless route so it'll just be the matter of pushing to the direction of Cape Wrath until we actually reach the lighthouse and then from there we've got 9 miles to get to Kellodale to get the ferry across and then it means we're going to get picked up at the other side of the ferry and head back down so it means we're going to have to camp one more night after the trail's done but I'm sure we can live with that knowing that we're going to get a lift back home which is really really good it means we don't need to worry about it but for tonight that's us done. Tomorrow we're heading to Cape Wrath Lighthouse. Such a good feeling. See you tomorrow. What's up guys? It's Eddie Fitz. It's day 17 of the Cape Wrath Trail. It's our final day heading to Cape Wrath Lighthouse. We're just leaving Sandwood Bay. The midges are crazy. Um, the sun's coming up. Hopefully the sun and the wind will take them away. Um, we're going to be pushing on. We've got around 8 miles to get to the lighthouse. It's going to be a tough day through trackless paths, but this is it. This is the final day. This takes us to the end of our journey, all the way to that lighthouse. It certainly isn't the easiest 8 miles to get to the Cape Wrath lighthouse. You're just coming across absolute no path. Um, coming across lumps, bumps, marsh, bog, heather, um, twisting your ankle as you go. But I think we're just coming up to 200 metres and then from there it's a downward descent to the Cape Wrath Lighthouse. So hopefully soon we'll get to see it, um, which will just push us that little bit further. But not long to go until we reach the finish. We've just crossed all the way across this moorland, bog, rough terrain but we're finally on the last bit of the track that takes you to Cape Wrath Lighthouse. What a feeling.
we've finally made it to Cape Wrath Lighthouse just around 240 miles we're here and it's only just in sight <laughs> How does it feel? A wee dramatic finish, dramatic finish. Honestly, can't believe that after 16 and a half days, we finally made it to the lighthouse. It's such a good feeling, you know. We've walked for we've walked for around 240 odd miles, and it's just been absolute relentless pain. But I know that from this stage on, that you're just going to remember all those good moments, the memories, getting to the lighthouse, you know, all the good bits, the sunshine. Obviously the sunshine's gone here, we're currently in the clouds, but it's just so amazing to have walked the Cape Raft Trail and to be able to say that I can tick it off the list and say that I completed this epic challenge, this journey, um, especially after Covid and lockdown and being stuck indoors, then having 16 and a half days of just straight out there into the, some of the most remote and best places in Scotland, you really can't uh, you know, argue with the amount of amazing times that you're going to be able to talk about all these amazing moments of being able to talk about the trail and you know you've actually completed it it's it's such an amazing feeling to know that we're here um, I never really thought we were going to make it after the first couple of days the pain the struggles uh, that, that day four really really knocked out of us with the bad weather but we're here we've made it and that's that's what matters is we made it to Cape Wrath Lighthouse we made it to Cape Wrath Lighthouse. So, the hardest part of the Cape Wrath Trail wasn't actually the Cape Wrath Trail itself. It was the fact that as soon as you'd finished the Cape Wrath Trail, you got all excited. Then you had a nine mile walk to get to the, the ferry to take you back across uh, to Durness. We didn't think we were going to make the ferry, but we've just phoned the guy up and he's coming back across five o'clock we're getting across to Durness. It's such a good feeling to know that pushing through there, 17 miles all the way, that's us finally finished walking. Hopefully, at the other side, we'll get picked up, camp up for the night, then head home. It's a good feeling to just stop. 